What is going on investors? Hopefully guys are doing well out there. That is right. It is Friday. It's a three day weekend. And most importantly, it is time for the Fang Stock Recap Show here on the Investor Channel, where every Friday we recap all the major news and the technical chart patterns from all the major Fang Stocks, including Microsoft, Tesla, Netflix, and NVIDIA and more. I do want to note, I am recording this around 9.45 a.m. Pacific time. When we get to the Tesla segment of the show, you'll see why I had to record this one just a little bit earlier. I make that note because these prices will likely change by the time this video is published. Now, let's kick things off like we always do with Meta Platform. Start of the week closer to $192 per share. End of the week closer to about $194 per share. This is on the heels after Meta Platforms picked Microsoft Azure to be its strategic cloud provider. I think this is my mildly bullish for a company like Microsoft. It's essentially neutral for a company like Meta, but it's very bullish for NVIDIA, which is is using its GPUs as kind of the back end to power Microsoft Azure Cloud. When we get over to the NVIDIA segment, they obviously released their earnings this week and they were pretty much fantastic based on the cloud business now becoming their number one from a revenue perspective. Now, Snapchat crashed 40% earlier this week and dragged down stocks like Meta. I tell you what, when you come over here and looked at this one, this stock just had a massive drop from over 195 all the way down to 176 dollars per share after Snapchat kind of pre-announced they were going to come underneath their kind of low-end guidance for the upcoming quarter because the macro environment has just deteriorated for a large percentage of their advertisers. I did a whole video about this. I thought it was really interesting. This bad news was clearly not priced into any of these stocks as these stocks took a massive hit, but obviously since then the market has pretty much gotten back all of those losses. Now, Washington DC is going to sue Meta Chief Mark Zuckerberg over that Cambridge Analytica data scandal. This goes back several years and they claim that Mark Zuckerberg took part in the decisions allowing for Cambridge Analytica to acquire data, which many feel impacted the outcome of that 2016 election. Now, moving on to Apple, start of the week closer to 138. Hello, gains over at Apple. End of the week closer to 148. Apple rose this week and more specifically on Friday to reclaim its most valuable company title from Saudi's Aramco. We'll see if Apple is going to able to maintain that or if we see some pullbacks when we get over the technical segment, we'll talk about if Apple is setting up for a nice little rally in the shorter term or if we could pull back. Now, Apple's iPhone may face distribution delays. It's the upcoming iPhone that is scheduled to release sometime in the fall as lockdowns in China continue to persist. Now, we saw this these same press releases last year, okay? We were doing the Fang Stock Recap show last year and obviously there were much more difficult supplies supply chain issues last year. Not that they fully resolved themselves, but it was a difficult supply chain environment last year. Apple weighed through it. So as you see, I mean, look, I'll show you a bunch of contradictory press releases based on what's going on in China. We'll see it here with Apple. We'll also see it when we get to the Tesla news as well. You're going to see kind of the back and forward of this. And I would just have to revert back to last year. Apple did a nice job navigating through it. Now, Apple has not changed their shipping plan for iPhone 14. That's the upcoming device scheduled to release this fall despite the Shanghai lo lockdown. So this is what I'm talking about. You'll get one press release on the 25th that says, hey, maybe they'll have to delay the distribution. The next day an analyst says, hey, they haven't changed their plan. I would just side on being optimistic about this again, based on how Apple has handled this over the last two years, which I personally think are probably more difficult than the environment that we're in now. Now, AirPods Pro 2 is to be mass built in Vietnam as Apple starts to diversify away from China. I think this is just a good idea. Not that I have any ill feelings towards China manufacturing a large percentage of Apple's devices. There's just a lot of risks there. There's health risks. There's geography risk. There's political risks. There's just all these risks where if this one country shuts down for any number of different reasons, or if it's just impossible to get those goods to the United States at a reasonable price, well, I tell you what, having more places where you can manufacture 
your product could certainly insulate Apple to a certain degree based on the fact that the vast majority of their revenues and profits are generated by products that need to be manufactured overseas. Now, Apple's O'Brien pushes against a unionization effort in a video. He sent a message to employees saying, and I quote, I worry about what it would mean to put another organization in the middle of our relationship, an organization that doesn't have a deep understanding of Apple or our business, and most importantly, one that I do not believe shares our commitment to you. Boy, this sounds like a boyfriend trying to stay with his girlfriend. We'll see how these things work out in a really tight labor market, which I think we're going to transition to here in the United States. I tell you what, unemployment has been historically low for a pretty long period of time here in the United States. And if you weren't working or you didn't have a job, well, the government just piled a ton of money on you. I think in a different environment where it's harder to get a job, harder to find a good job, these unionization pushes will start to slow down. We'll see what happens here in the future and see how those impact Apple's profits and relationship with their employees heading into the future. Now, Apple to start rolling out a tap to pay on their iPhone today and in its stores. Now, this photo I have here uh, is a little deceiving. So you have this phone, but then you also have this payment processing device. This is how Apple Pay works. But the way this tap to phone is going to work is this phone is actually going to work as kind of this payment processing device. So I can come up to this phone and tap my my phone on it and then essentially exchange money there. It's actually pretty new and it definitely could, I could see something like this at like flea markets or more like informal retail certainly could become a very, very popular payment option. And it could take a little bit of business. They say here certainly compares or competes against block square devices. We'll see. I think this will just be a segment of the market, but certainly anything that Apple has behind it certainly could become a very, very profitable and popular among consumers and businesses. Now, Electric Arts EA gained 3% and it's headed for its longest win streak, quite frankly, since 2015 because what we are seeing is a consolidation in the video game maker space. It was kicked off essentially. I mean, there was a lot of other smaller deals that were done, but obviously once Microsoft broke ground on that Activision deal for like 60 or $70 billion, well, that's kicking off a bunch of other M&A and activity. Now, when we're talking about EA Sports, I mean, right at the current time, this is a $38 billion deal. And so it's speculating here that quite frankly, there's not that many companies in the world that could afford to buy electronic arts outside of the Apple's potentially the Amazons, certainly like a Google, maybe even like a meta platforms if they really wanted to blow up their balance sheet. But it'll be interesting to see if any of these other mega cap stocks decide to get into video games as heavily as Microsoft has. And certainly Microsoft, I guess, theoretically could bid for electronic arts, but I doubt regulators in the current environment would let that fly. Moving on to Amazon. Oh my God, do we have green on the screen for Amazon this week? Start of the week at $2,154 per share. Looking like it's going to head the week at about $2,260 per share. We've got a Bloomberg story that's saying Amazon is looking to sublet or end warehouse leases as their online sales cool. They want to shed at least 10 million square feet, which sounds like a lot. And it is okay. 10 million square feet is a lot, but this is only a fraction of the percentage of what they've basically expanded over the last couple of years. Amazon obviously aggressively expanded into this warehouse space. They kind of certainly overbuilt on that end. And so they're looking to maybe just take off. Maybe I saw estimates. This was like maybe 5% of what they've added just over the last couple of years. Certainly a prudent move, I think, from Amazon. Moving on to Netflix. Start of the week. Wow, 182. This one popped higher to 194. This is on the heels of Netflix upcoming advertising tier. Analysts believe that this will boost subscribers and narrow the free cash flow gap. I got another positive note by another analyst saying that as Ads on Netflix may boost U.S. revenue by 21%. I believe this, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but I actually think this is a nice tailwind for Netflix. They certainly have to do a careful job not to alienate certain customers, but if they can create a free or very low cost tier by ad supporting it, I think it's an interesting business model. And when we look at like the Googles, we look at Amazon's advertising business, we certainly could look at Facebook's or any online advertising business. Boy, they tend to be very high margin and very profitable 
once they reach a certain scale and Netflix certainly could get a piece of that pie. Moving on to Nvidia start of the week closer to 162 and it is rocketed off that area of support that was down there close to about $160 per share after announcing earnings. This stock has taken off over $186 per share. That's on the heels of these earnings. I won't get into the minutia of these earnings. I just posted a video a couple of days ago and I can imagine most of you probably viewed it or have used parts of it. Revenue came in at $8.28 billion. That was 46% growth that beat expectations. NVIDIA's growth rate on that revenue side likely to f just wane just a little bit in the coming years, move to kind of a mid-teens kind of growth rate. Obviously, if they can continue to re-accelerate that, quite frankly, shares are probably still a little undervalued. You'd say, hey, 32 times forward PE on this one. But I think some investors are pricing in that NVIDIA might be able to re-accelerate their growth rate considering they have plenty of cash on hand. They're also doing a buyback. Now, who's believing in NVIDIA? That's Kathy Wood. She jumped back into NVIDIA, scooping up nearly 250,000 shares. That was just a couple of days ago. Moving on to Google, start of the week at $2,183. And just like Facebook, we saw this one fall off a cliff on that snap news and then boom, just got all of that back. End of the week, basically flat for the week at about $2,240 per share. Now, Google is under fire after British competition regulator launches a second probe on their ad tech. We're just seeing this week after week. Considering Google's dominance, they tend to kind of leverage that and maybe in some cases, according to the letter of the law, maybe over leverage that and they get their get in trouble a little bit with regulators. Normally, these type of things end in some kind of fine and lots of lawyers over at Google getting extremely rich as well. Moving on to Microsoft, start of the week at $254 per share. Hello, sellers just dried up on this one, melted all the way up to $271 per share. Actually, a key level from a technical perspective. Now, Microsoft unveils live sharing, a dev box, and more at their build conference. Just some minor updates and minor tweaks to some of their stuff that Microsoft does. Release an update to Microsoft Teams, which essentially competes with Zoom and Salesforce. Just from my experience following Microsoft for several decades now, they just do minor tweaks to their products, and it's just weird. Their products, like a product like Teams, in my opinion, will just continue to get more and more popular. It might not be better than Zoom. It might not be better than Slack, but because of Microsoft's dominance and the fact that they have so many touch points with consumers and businesses, more importantly, well, their products tend to end up in the hands of more people as years go on. Now, moving on to Tesla, start of the week at $640 per share. Hello, my goodness, this stock is up over $750 per share, and it's on the heels of me having to record this show back several hours early because I am going to go pick up a new Model Y. So add one to the delivery count over at Tesla. I'm heading to Fremont here in a couple of hours. Now, Tesla already wants more space for its Berlin Gigafactory. You t tend to see this with Tesla, okay? They're already kind of planning things out in their new Gigafactory out in Texas. They don't really have a lot of space out in the Fremont factory out here in California. I've been there. This will be my second time out there. They don't have a lot of room out there, okay, quite frankly. But in this German facility, they're looking to add like a parking lot. This is not really adding more manufacturing place and more capacity, although it probably will improve capacity and output through the factory. But they're looking for parking lots and maybe places to kind of dock supplies and those types of things. Tesla eyes Indonesia for their next Gigafactory. It appears that according to a minister in Indonesia, Tesla has plan to build an EV and battery plant in the nation, likely over the next couple years. Certainly bullish news if you're a Tesla investor, since here's the thing with Tesla, they've proven that they can get these gigafactories open, not only here in the United States, not only in one state, but two states, but also they've proven they could get this done in a tough, tough regulatory environment over in Germany. They've also proven they can do it in China, which is also very difficult. Tesla's just proven that this gigafactory model is working for them. And so you have to assume this is positive news for investors. This will increase capacity. This is bullish news for Tesla, in my opinion. Now, China auto sales are set to fall further in May after that April slowdown. We, I mean, we saw a massive decline in output for China. And also when you look at Neo and Li Auto and Xpong and all the different manufacturers in China, you're seeing a slowdown in general of the Chinese economy, uh, similar to here, what you're seeing here in the United States. China is probably a couple of quarters ahead of us in terms of that slowdown. So you're probably seeing a little bit of a weakening of demand, but obviously you have the slowdown and the shutdowns when it comes to the factories. Now, speaking of those, Tesla aims to be at pre-lockdown production levels in their Shanghai factory by Tuesday. This was Tuesday of this week. And so
So look, we're just seeing kind of start, stop, start, stop. I would assume as an investor, it's somewhere down the middle. It's not completely shut down and it's not running at full capacity. That is obviously going to impact Tesla's earnings here probably in a couple of weeks or probably more specifically, maybe a month or two away. And it'll be all about how Tesla's management massages that with investors because if they do a good job with communication, they do a good job saying, hey, we're going to get that. We're going to see that demand on the back half of Q3 or Q4 or into next year. Well, certainly could be bullish news for Tesla investors. Now, moving on to the technical segment of the show, we've been calling it for several days now or several weeks, quite frankly, is some kind of relief rally here in the stock market. I thought it would come back maybe a week or two ago. It took a little while. Now we're back basically in the middle of the range. It's an S&P 500 chart. Wouldn't surprise us, quite frankly, if we continue to walk up this into next week, you get to the top of this range. That is when I would start looking for sellers to emerge back into the stock market. I think it's a high probability that you walk up to the top of this range. Even if you get actually above the top of the range, you really got to get above the previous highs up here at 4,500 on the S&P 500 to really start the conversation that maybe this was actually a bottom. Instead, we'll probably assume that we'll make another lower low here in the coming weeks and maybe even months ahead. And in my opinion, present another pretty fantastic buying opportunity. Now, moving on to the technical segment for the FANG stocks, kicking it off with Facebook. We'll zoom into the area and look, this one's not doing anything in particular, even though it had a really, really nice week of recovery. It had that big gap down on that Snapchat noob, and we're basically back where we were at the beginning of the week. So Facebook's basically been tr sideways for the last seven days. We're still locked in this downtrend. We'd assume that this stock could potentially get to the top of this range, which get it over, you know, real close to like $210 per share, maybe not that high, but we have to assume like the broader markets as well, we'd have make some kind of pullback, make a new lower low, which is right now sitting at about 171. Now let's assume I'm completely wrong. Stocks have bottom. They'll reverse. Well, you're looking for this one to actually get above $220 per share and maybe even more specifically, a little higher than that, maybe up to 230, 240. And look, if you're like me, you're out of Facebook, you've taken some profits on it. It's no big deal. I get so many comments on my channel. I'm biased against Facebook. I'm a hater. I don't have diamond hands. Guys, this is not my children. Facebook is not my child. It's not even like a Rolex watch where I have like an emotional attachment to it. This is some numbers and paper on a screen. It's no big deal. And the reason why I say that is because you have these highs here at about 240 where the stock gap down after earnings. You have so, if Facebook can get momentum back in the stock and get above 245, I will be the first person to buy this stock at these levels because you have this massive gap between 240 and 290. That is where the easy money, in my opinion, with Facebook is going to be made. Down here, man, you are playing against the trend, especially on the longer side. Certainly from a short perspective, there's been money to made over at Facebook. Now, moving on to Apple, this one had a nice bounce off the bottom of the range, okay? We're making a similar type kind of downward trend pattern over at Apple. We see we bottomed out down at the bottom of the range at 138. I did step in here and add like, I don't know, like two or three shares in a retirement account. I think I've already have like 60 or 70 shares of Apple. So it's a really, really small ad. But when you get down to the bottom of these range, I tell you what, you're trying to dip by, you're trying to dollar cost average. This is where you step in. Now we've rallied up to the top a little bit. Okay, we're not even maybe halfway through. So it wouldn't surprise me if Apple just continues to walk up this channel. But again, just like the S&P 500, we'd assume sellers would step in before the previous highs, which would take Apple in the shorter term up here north of maybe $160 per share before another red week or month happens. And all of a sudden takes us down back into this 138 level. I think you buy it again if it heads lower in that sense. Now, moving on to Amazon. Amazon, it certainly has found some support down here at about $2,000 per share. It's bounced off of that level. It's about 10% higher than that. You've got a ton of headspace on Amazon where if you get any kind of bullish momentum in the stock, boy, it could rally into, quite frankly, probably $3,000 per share without a lot of struggle. Now, on the downside with Amazon, you break through this $2,000 level, high, high probability you're coming south of about $1,800 per share, probably creates a buying opportunity for Amazon. Moving on to Netflix, probably the most interesting. We'll zoom in here to the bottom on Netflix and we'll see, look, this stock kind of was in this downward channel and it depends on 
how you want to draw this channel in, but it, it really did kind of break above it this week. Now it's possible it's creating kind of a newer set of highs here and then just comes back to the bottom of the channel over at Netflix. That is possible. The other thing that's possible is we have kind of found a level of support that we've marked out for a while. It's actually this blue line over at Netflix. We keep shifting it around because the stock is kind of dancing around it, but this longer term uptrend with Netflix is still intact. And if you believe that is going to hold and this stock is head higher, you've got this massive gap in price. It's just like Facebook. Okay. There's this massive gap between about $200 per share all the way up over $320 per share where Netflix could really just take off and have very little turbulence getting back to those levels. Obviously it would take momentum in the stock, but also the stock market as well. I think there's some great opportunities, at least from a technical perspective for Netflix on the long end. Obviously we didn't go over the bear case scenario, but much, much lower. Certainly it could go. Now moving on to Nvidia, very nice bounce. Okay. We had this area marked out here at about $160 per share. Unfortunately, we spent very, I mean, we're talking about very little time in this box over at Nvidia. And it's just going to show you the confidence level of this area with Nvidia. I mean, it literally came down here and hopped off it. Like this was like a 2000 degree stove or something. And you touched it. Okay. It snapped off of this level that is giving us confidence that this is where the buyers are going to be with Nvidia down here at about $160 per share. Now the stock has made a really, really nice move, but technically it's still in a downtrend. It's not really in this downtrend anymore, but the stock is still technically in some kind of downtrend, depending on where you want to draw this technical line in. If you've missed Nvidia, you like it, you like the earnings. I think we back test somewhere in this 160 level again. And that's not to say we back test it and we break through. We back test and break through. Well, I think it creates a really nice buying opportunity. If it comes back here and gets in the vicinity of this level, wouldn't blame somebody for wanting to step in and buying it at those levels since it appears the buyers, at least in the shorter term, have stepped in. Similar type of formation with Google. There was an area down here at about $2,000 per share. Didn't quite get there or maybe got there for uh, several minutes during the trading days and boom, just bounced off that like a pogo stick, but don't worry. Don't, don't feel like you need to chase stocks at this level. This stock is still in this like major downtrend. Wouldn't surprise me in a really bullish week, maybe next couple of weeks, you could get back to 2,500 on Google, but you would reach some resistance there. All the, the entire market, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, all of it would reach some kind of technical resistance here where sellers are more than likely to step in, maybe pulling back and maybe getting a retest down it here at 2000. Remember, bottoms don't typically form on a v-shaped formation where they kind of come down to a price and then snap up never to see that again they tend to want to like uh, like test and bounce test and bounce so i'd like to see google retest kind of the 2100 2000 level i think that could be an area where it, at the very least you're kind of dollar cost averaging into a stock now microsoft looks very similar to apple it's locked in this kind of downward formation we've made a bounce off the bottom you could have bought microsoft back here i mean it's, it was difficult to predict that kind of this 250 level would be the low. Apple was a little bit more clear because you actually had a level of support underneath Apple at that 138. So kind of two technical levels lined up with Apple. Whereas when we look at the Microsoft chart, wasn't quite the case. So don't feel bad if you didn't really grab that spot. I would expect this stock to continue to rally. Like most of these stocks, I think you could definitely see on a short and trading week next week, stocks continue to rally to the top of the range only to meet some resistance at the top there and then end up pulling back and creating another buying opportunity, maybe close to these lows, maybe lower than that. We'll discuss that when that time comes. Now, moving on to Tesla, we've obviously been analyzing this one to a certain degree. Looks very much like Microsoft and Apple. It's pulled down, bounced off a lower level. Looks like it wants to walk to the top of the channel in all. This actually goes for all of these stocks as they walk to the top of the range. Again, none of these stocks are your children. It's absolutely 100% okay to sell them to take profits nobody's ever had a bad day by taking a profit on a stock stop listening to these amateurs that have just been in the market just for the last couple of years that talk about diamond hands and holdaline and doing all this stupid stuff if you want to take profits on your stock these are not your children this is not your primary home this is not your primary residence it's okay to take profits if tesla walks back up over 900 per share i would expect a lot of people taking profits on this one in the short 
shorter term. We would look for it to get rejected up here in about the thousand dollar price range, probably 950, 975. We'd expect short sellers to come in at this level and try to push this stock back down. You make new lower lows on Tesla or at least retest this area right around 650, $700 per share. Those have been the buying opportunities for Tesla more recently. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's weekend. Stay safe over the holiday weekend and we'll see you again next week. Good luck with your investments.